So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another GitOps Days community special slash Weave, uh, Weave online user group session. Uh, I'm Stacy Potter, a community manager here at WeaveWorks. And today I'm joined by my teammate, Allison Dowdy, developer advocate. Uh, she'll be walking us through and demoing the uh, Flux guides on setting up notifications, alerts, and webhooks with Flux 2. So a little bit of background on the company that we work for. It's called WeaveWorks. Hopefully, if you know us, you know us from so much of the open source work that we've done. Uh, of course, today we're featuring Flux, which is in the CNCF as an incubating project as of last month. Uh, Flagger is, as many of you know, uh, another open source project from our teammate Stefan Prodon that is centered around progressive delivery, such as blue-green or canary deployments. Uh, a quick note that we've moved Slack channels for Flagger from the WeaveWorks community to the CNCF uh, since it now lives under the Flux project uh, in the CNCF. So be sure to check that out. And we've got many more projects that are listed here. This is a short list, but very quickly, uh, Cortex is a project that is built and improves upon uh, Prometheus. Weave Ignite is an open source project created by also another one of our teammates, Lucas Kaldstrom, um, that combines Firecracker v micro VMs with OCI images, Container D and CNI to unified containers and VMs. And of course, EKS Cuddle, which is the official CLI for Amazon EKS. Uh, we have a lot of other projects. So uh, if you're interested, you can visit our website at weave.works or check out our repos on GitHub. So some quick housekeeping items. These sessions typically last around 30 to 45 minutes, but um, can hover around like maybe the 45 minute mark. And then we have a hard stop at the 60 minute mark. So we are using Zoom. Uh, if you have a question at any time, feel free to type it into the chat and um, just change the two from just panelists to panelists and attendees. A lot of time there's a lot of folks on uh, that are in the community that will answer questions if they come up and they know the answer. So don't be shy there. So if you've joined us in the past few weeks and months, uh, you know that we've been doing these talks every two weeks or so. So thanks again to Lee, Scott, and now Allison um, for our Flux community of users. Uh, so if you are a Flux user, we thank you very much. We really appreciate that you're part of the community. And if you're new, welcome. Uh, as you may be aware of by now, Flux V1 is in maintenance mode. And Flux V2 has reached feature parity with V1 and continues to creep closer and closer to GA. So a lot of these talks have really focused on giving you sneak peeks uh, to the powerful capabilities uh, of that we've been able to offer with Flux V2. So if you've uh, if we've missed something that's a burning topic for you, uh, please shoot us a Slack message or an email or ping me here on the chat and let me know because uh, we always want to make these valuable for you. So a quick note on how to get connected to us uh, through Flux. Sorry, I'm just seeing some comments coming in through the chat. So we'll uh, we'll get to the questions as we, as we go here. Um, so you can check out our website at fluxcd.io. Uh, the docs are toolkit.fluxcd.io. There's also a link on the website. Um, directly to that. And the first resource, uh, if you have questions, I would say is GitHub discussions. So uh, we're trying to guide a lot of folks there because it's going to be an, an everlasting sort of content um, uh, place instead of Slack. Uh, but you can always hit us up on Slack as well. So some basics, if you're brand new to uh, GitOps, we just want to give you a quick, what is GitOps? As the name indicates, it's Git plus Ops, or sometimes we like to say operations by pull request, where you have a repo as your single source of truth. It's not just app dev or just operations, but really a methodology that crosses all areas. We talk, talk about GitOpsing all the things and the business value that comes with that are reliability, velocity, and security benefits. Um, it's a paradigm, it's a methodology. It's not one single tool or technology. Of course, we're very excited about our Flux project and we work really hard to get it to a place where we've brought you know, a lot of GitOps value, but we're thinking about the vision of the most powerful way we can think about GitOps in the coming years and hopefully decades. And we really do feel that even if you're not using Kubernetes, you can still do GitOps. 
But if you are using Kubernetes, it really is part of the evolution of Kubernetes, leveraging the Kubernetes API and what that brings uh, and really is the next stage and way of leveraging the benefits of that technology. And we're super excited to be part of that community in a very deep way. So uh, be sure to work, uh, also follow the working group, the GitOps working group. Um, they're doing lots of work uh, in and around GitOps. Um, so under the CNCF app delivery SIG, you can check them out on GitHub there. Um, and then the principles of GitOps, of course, I'll run through these very quickly. Um, this is for everyone who's new. So not everybody has all four of these principles. So really anywhere you get started is a great way to start on your journey. Whether you're using Git as your versioning system or not, the important thing is that you're using your versioning system. Other core principles are that you have a declarative system and that you have a way in which changes are automatically applied to that system. And then at the end, you have ways of reconciling and ensuring correctness uh, as well as uh, sending alerts. So that is a really quick uh, overview of what is GitOps and the principles of GitOps. Um, but with that, I think Allison, I am done with my part and I will hand it over to you. So welcome Allison. Hey. Hello everyone. Uh, let me just uh, grab that screen sharing right now. Um, so yeah, here we are. Um, can so I assume everyone can see my screen pretty well. If it isn't quite clear, um, just shout out in the chat, and that message will be relayed back. So um, today we're going to be covering notifications, alerts, and webhooks. Um, not going to be covering them in that exact order. Um, so uh, the plan is why we're going to go over briefly why you would want notifications with Flux. Then we'll set up a webhook receiver with Flux in GitHub. And then we'll set up some notifications uh, for Flux within Discord. So uh, why? Uh, when you're looking at the terminal, only you know what's going on. Um, Surfacing alerts through these messaging apps and other services gives your team visibility and saves you time. Instead of your team asking you um, for details about, say, uh, what's the cluster doing, um, they can get uh, notifications within the messaging app that you set up for Flux. Um, so automation is one of the key principles of GitOps. Um, so less manual op operations means you'll have more time for building cool things and innovating. So, and that's also why automation is one of the key business values of GitOps. So you can read all about this at gitops.community. So um, a quick uh, brief overview of what Flux is. Flux is the most powerful tool to get the GitOps experience um, as a set of Kubernetes controllers, and it's a GitOps-based continuous delivery system. So um, Kubernetes get, oh, we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so that was supposed to be a cross through there. Um, so I'm using EKS because we're doing some load balancing stuff, and I don't really want to expose my dev station to the world. Um, so I've got a cluster all set up here, uh, kubectl get po. Yeah, cluster works. <laughs> so first, of all, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bootstrap our cluster using Flux. So um, to do that, we're gonna get some, uh, we're gonna export our GitHub token and our GitHub username. I've already done this on the beforehand, so I don't have to show everyone my GitHub tokens. Um, and then we're going to bootstrap the cluster. So what this says is, says the repo is gonna be called uh, Woog demo. And the, um, now we're gonna be calling the flux bootstrap command. So flux bootstrap GitHub, um, and we're gonna say the owner is me. So a GitHub user is Allison DY. That's my GitHub username repository. So our repo name, Luke demo. The branch is going to be main. And I'm gonna put tech tech personal on the end. 
hang on. Uh, seems I've run into a little issue here. Um, I'm just going to pause this while I figure out where my GitHub token's gone. Bear with me, I just don't going. And well, okay. Um, we're back. Um, so it seems. Um, so I actually, I tried to make a file earlier on so I could uh, source all the variables that I needed into my terminal. Um, and uh, it seems like Flux isn't really playing nicely with that file that I. Source. So I just before I just uh, exported my GitHub token straight to this terminal shell here. Um, so hopefully, yep, we've created a repository. So now I'm running the flux bootstrap command. So what that does is it's going to create a repo on on GitHub called a uh, Woog demo under my GitHub user and it's going to bootstrap all the GitOps toolkit components to my cluster. Um, so there we go. Pushing and applying sync manifests. And that should be almost done. Waiting for the reconciliation. Waiting for the reconciliation. The reconciliation's done. All the components are healthy. So with that, um, we're going to clone the uh, GitHub. We're going to clone the cluster repository. Then we're going to CD into it. Um, that shouldn't be nor example. It should be CD into repo name. Um, so let's go CD into. There we go. We're in the Woog demo folder. So if I do like, um, oh, that's my GitHub token. If I do a little LS, um, we've got our flux, flux system folder. Um, and that's got uh, some files. Uh, th these files describe uh, the basic uh, flux components. Uh, so yeah, so now we've got a, uh, so now we've got Flux bootstrapped, we're gonna create a, a little token that's uh, gonna have our webhook receiver's secret. So I'm gonna copy paste this. So let's just say is get some random string of characters. And uh, this one says, uh, create a secret um, from that random string of characters. So exposing the webhook receiver. So uh, now that we've created like the secret token, uh, we're going to create some YAML. We're, go we're going to create a load balancer in Kubernetes. Um, I'm going to quickly pull up the, because I can't really copy paste from these slides that easily. I've already got our load balancer in a file over here, and I'm going to go No service YAML. And I'm just going to paste that across. All right. So this service is going to be used to expose the uh, receiving webhook uh, object in Flux. So this this makes it so that um, GitHub can send a ping event or a push event to an endpoint 
influx, which will then fire uh, off notifications. Um, so now we've got that all set up. Now we need to create the receiver. So flux create receiver. This receiver is going to be a GitHub receiver. And it's going to um, take ping and push events. It's going to um, use the secret uh, webhook token that we created before. It's going to use the uh, Git repository objects in Flux system. It's going to live in the Flux system namespace. And then this last line, the export line, this just says, take this command and put the output of it into this YAML file. So if we look at that code nor receiver.yaml, you'll see it's created this, um, this uh, flux receiver YAML um, from that command line object which is another really cool thing about Flux is that um, you don't have to like copy paste your YAMLs around. You can use the command line to generate a new YAML. And this, is, this can be particularly helpful if you're not quite sure about some Flux YAML you might've found on the internet randomly, like on Stack Overflow. And you might want another way to like verify this YAML's all right. So you'd write the command line version of the said YAML and you'd be able to compare that with uh, what you see online. So with that, so we've created the receiver for Flux um, and then it produced file like that. And now we're going to commit this and push this all to Git. So uh, Git status, Git add, nor Git commit. Add webhook receiver and um, service. All right. And now we'll push that up to Flux. So um, we're going to now check how Flux is, we'll check our cluster now. So we're going to go watch kubectl get service tag in flux system so you can see um the webhook receiver um it's creating that file now yeah created that it's created that um service um and we should also be able to see um flux get uh flux get receivers check in flux system let's see we've got a receiver's been initialized with that url cool um so we now know those things are up and running so now we're going to set up the webhook on the github side we're going to navigate to our repos uh, settings and webhooks. So we're going to go, um, I think I've got the right window. Mm. No, that's, that's the right window. That's actually the so now I'm going to go to github.com slash me slash Woog demo. So over there we've got our service YAML and our receiver YAML. And we're going to go into settings and we're going to click, um, oh gosh, webhooks. And we're going to add a webhook. And, hey, Allison, um, would you mind uh, increasing your browser font size or this? this... Oh, no worries. Yes. Yeah, Thank is a you bit, so much. A bit small. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
the ice cream trucks, right? Um, okay. There we go. Um, so now we're going to create a new webhook in GitHub. So we're going to get this URL of the um, this URL of the load balancer over here. We're going to copy paste that very long URL, and we're going to it's going to be insecure because we don't have any um, secure stuff set up. Uh, and now, so we've got the URL of the load balancer, HTTP, <laughs> that, that's a typo. And now we're going to grab the path of the hook on the flux get receiver end. So uh, what that means is um, when you go flux get receivers, uh, part of that message when you see a receiver is ready is going to give you the path of the hook. Um, so there we go. I'm going to paste that in. And now we're going to also need that token that we generated earlier. So we're going to echo that. Um, copy, paste. And we're going to do just the push event and um, active. So uh, the reason we don't have to specify the ping event is because it's just a, that's like a debugging thing that GitHub has, uh, which isn't under, let me select individual events. So with that, I'm gonna click add webhook. And um, we'll just put that to the side for now. Okay, we sent a ping payload to test it out, um, which is four beans. And you can see there's a green tick here, which means the last delivery was successful. That means that it pinged it successfully. Um, yeah. So uh, that's cool, but um, it's only one part of the one part of the whole um, demo shipping thing we have here today. Um, the next part is setting up. Uh, Discord, which is going to be our little messaging system over here. So here's a little bit, a uh, little example from um, some earlier test runs of this demo. Um, so we're going to set up our Git repo Woog demo to uh, send notifications into the channel Woog demo on my dev server Discord. So assuming you've created or already created a Discord server, if not, you can go to discord.new to create your own one. So, and we've created a text channel for our alerts here. And we're going to click the settings cog. And we're going to cl click integrations and we're going to create a webhook. Um, so we've got this webhook here and we're going to give our webhook a name. We're going to call this um, Flux spot. Yeah, I'm going to call it flux spot. And it's going to post into channel Woog demo. Right. So um, you can copy this and set it aside for later, but I'm just going to, uh, we're going to probably be using this for webhook URL in the next step. So to so the next step we go. Save change. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to press the save changes button. Um, so now that's all updated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to define an alert provider. So we're going to create a we're going to create a secret with the uh, webhook URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy paste that, and we're going to click from literal address equals, and then we're going to go back over to Discord, copy that webhook URL, and paste it right in. So we've now created this um, secret um, in Kubernetes that is, that is going to be referenced by uh, Discord. Um, our, it's going to be referenced by our notification provider for Discord. Um, so we're going to go flux create alert. Or well, first we're going to do export some variables. That is wrong. I need to update that. 
So those dollar symbols shouldn't be there. Export D channel is going to be Woog demo. And export D bot user is going to be um, Fluxbot. And now we're going to create our alert provider. So it's going to be of type Discord. It's going to use um, this uh, Discord URL secret. And it's going to post into the channel uh, Luke Demo. And it's going to use the uh, username Fluxbot. And we're going to export that. We're going to put that into a YAML file called norprovider.yaml. So it's going to produce a file like such. Yep. Channels, the Woog demo, secrets, Discord URL, uh, usernames, Fluxbot. So now we're going to define an alert. So um, we're going to stop here because that's probably like, we'll not stop here. Uh, just take a little brief pause here to explain. So we have these alerts and alert providers. So alert providers state the connection between the notification service you want to use and Flux and alerts specify um, alerts specify how an alert provider is used. So like what kind of alerts will be fired, et cetera. So um, we're gonna create an alert definition for all repositories and customizations. And um, it's going to use the provider that we created before, the NOR provider. And it's going to um, trigger on events of severity info. And it's going to, uh, the event source is going to be anything that's a customization or anything that's a Git repository. In the namespace flux system. And we're going to export that to a YAML file called nor alert and um, the YAML output looks kind of like that. So name of the provider, nor provider. So now we're going to um, commit that all, but I'm gonna move this slightly sideways so we can get a, a look into our alert channel while we do this. Um, Yes, add nor star, get commit. I'll just copy this. Save me some typing and get push. So in a couple seconds, uh, we're going to see our notifications will start to fire. Um, Oh, we won't actually, because um, we need to actually deploy something into the cluster. So we've deployed the alert definitions, but um, doesn't mean that there's anything for the alerts to fire on. Uh, so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy, uh, we're going to actually, we're going to get the status of the alert to see everything's um, been initialized properly. So we can see it's been initialized correctly. It's all healthy. So to test it out, we're going to create um, we're going to create a de deployment. Uh, we're going to create a deployment of pod info. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this source for this GitHub source over here. Um, this says uh, create um, a Git repository uh, that points to pod info on the master branch. Uh, with an interview of interval of 30 seconds, it'll check for changes and put this in the pod info source YAML. 
Um, and now we're going to create a customization and it's going to use that pod info get repository source and it's going to uh, look at the path customize it's going to prune the directories and it's going to use client side validation it's going to check for updates with an interval of five minutes and um, it's going to export we're going to put this all on a pod info customization yammer yaml so with that we're going to just uh check everything is all well and dandy yep got our customization we got our source so get add pod info get commit add these deployments and get push. So now we've added an actual deployment in. So there we go. Um, Flux is now sending alerts into our Discord channel. Um, so what it said here, it's it's fetch this change, fetch that change, pod info, and it's um, customization. It's created these things and um, the revision and all that. So, yeah, so we've got a good, well working firing alert. Um, well, what does a failure look like? Um, well, to find that out, we're going to create uh, a non existent source. Um, so, flux create source git non exist. I'm going to point it to the non existing repo that I do not have, and it's going to point to the branch main going to have an interval of 30 seconds and we're going to click I'm going to go put that in a file called non-exist source and then we're going to add whoo, add commit and push So you'll notice how quickly the, the notifications fire, like pretty much instantly, as soon as like I push something, a notification will fire into my Discord channel here. And that's because we set up, um, we set up a webhook uh, receiver earlier on. Uh, if we didn't set up the webhook receiver earlier on, it'll just um, send the alerts uh, at like as a specified interval and um, sometimes it'll even send the same alerts twice uh, that's because like it's just polling kubernetes for like the current events in the system so it doesn't matter if those events might have already fired it'll just yeah post them again so by using a webhook receiver it only posts the events as soon as uh, change has happened in git uh, so that's kind of why the receiver webhook receiver part brings things full circle. Um, so, yeah. Is there a, uh, we just had a quick question in the chat Ooh. and I was wondering if you could answer it. Uh, can you customize the alert text they're asking? Can you customize the alert text? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that question right off the top of my head. Um, but that is a good point. Uh, I'll probably follow up on that um, later on after this presentation and probably will update the docs if uh, you can do that. Um, okay, yeah. awesome, thanks. And then someone else is asking, um, can I just trigger the alert if something goes wrong? Yes, so um, with Flux, there are a couple, let's go to toolkit. Set up notifications. So um, we have many different, the event severity can be sent to info or error. So when it's error, the customized controller will alert on any error encountered during reconciliation. Um, so yeah, you can alert just on errors as well. Uh, so I believe that should answer your question. Thank you. Uh, there's a couple more, but if you need to continue so that we can get through, yeah. that's fine. We can save save some of these. So, yeah, 
we'll, we'll, we can go through those at the end. Um, so now we're going to remove this uh, non-existent source. And we're going to um, commit that and push it to Git. And you'll notice everything's gone back to green, gone back to happy. Um, marked for deletion, our faulty source. So what did we just do? Um, we set up a webhook receiver using Flux. We configured GitHub to send push notifications to it. And we set up Flux so it alerted these notifications in Discord. And with all those skills, you should be able to adopt one of those key GitOps principles we covered earlier, the automation one, um, and set up automated notifications for your Flux workloads. So next steps, uh, check out our core concepts guide, check out our notification guide, and try this demo out for yourself. So I've got this um, demo repo. It's under Alice and DY Flux demos. That's where all these slides, um, these YAMLs will be. Uh, I think I've pushed my updates to it. I'll just, I will, yep, it's got the latest version of these slides and YAMLs. Um, so if you check that out, you'll be able to see the slides and the YAML we used. Um, check out the Flux GitHub discussions. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a wrap. Fantastic. Question time. Yeah, yeah. So we had, um, after, I, sorry, I didn't realize you were so close to the end. I should have just held off. <laughs> uh, but thanks for answering no those a little bit earlier. Um, so after the last question that I was asking, it looks like um, Priyanka is asking, is there suspend capability uh, with an alert? So can you suspend an alert? Um, so what you can do is if you wanted to just um, like put the alert off for like a period of time, you can just remove the definition from Git and then roll back to it when you want to enable it. But like a specific kind of suspend flag, um, I cannot think of that on the top of my head. Sorry. No worries. Oh, Thanks. you can flux suspend alert. You can flux suspend alert. <laughs> Thanks, Kingdom. Kingdom. Appreciate. Uh, she says that's May, by the way. <laughs> <Not free. laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. So I think I think that's it. If you have any other questions, please type them into the chat. Um, oh, it looks like here's one that's coming in right now from Paul. Uh, if I have multiple clusters notifying into the same chat room, can I add context of which cluster an alert is coming from? That is, um, that is a good question because, um, well, so the having the context, what you can do if you're using like the Discord provider, for instance, is you can have multiple different kinds of webhooks. So if I share my screen again, actually, let's go back into here. So this one's called Fluxbot. So you can change the names of these to different clusters potentially. Um, so you're gonna have multiple different kinds of webhooks. Why would you not just use Prometheus and Alert Manager? Um, so you might be in a position where you don't wanna stand up Prometheus and Alert Manager for some reason, and you just, you want a quick way to get like alerts firing from Flux. Um, so back into integrations. So you could have one of these webhooks, but you could have a different name for like each alert kind of definition, um, but have the same named bot for everything. Um, yeah. Awesome. So uh, can I use the webhooks or even notifications in order to run a custom command within a predefined Docker? If, for example, a tools or build container, what can I use within the GitOps toolkit to do something like that? Or what do you suggest in order to integrate with Flux better? So for instance, in Flux, in Flux you want something to fire an 
a webhook so you can launch another process. Um, I don't have the answer to that on top of my head, but um, perhaps uh, Kingdon or some some other web workers in the audience might have that. Um, yeah. Uh, questions, lots of questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it looks like there's some other ones coming in here. Uh, so Kingdon says, my suggestion off the top of my head would be to do it in CI. Mm. Uh, can we get alerts from Flux modifying the Kubernetes cluster, such as changing a deployment, i.e. pushing a new image or restarting a deployment, just because something was pushed to GitHub or my image repository doesn't mean it is running yet. Okay. Um, yeah, so can we get alerts from Flux? Okay, just because, so instead of, um, so instead of like doing the push events and all that, like for the receiver end, you can, um, hang on. Um, so Kingdon's got some good answers uh, here. Notifications will tell you about any customizations, health checks that you've added. Um, so the receiver part of the, the, whole, the receiver part of this puzzle, pretty much it triggers for the alerts to fire. But if you don't have like that trigger on the receiver end, I'm sure there is a, yeah, I'll probably, I'll come back and follow up on that question actually, because I'm not 100% on the answer for that. Um. So uh, there's also another one. Flux One was compatible with Flux Cloud to template alert to a user friendly format. Is it possible to customize the alert template? So to change the, the text inside the alert, um, I think I had this question earlier and I couldn't really didn't really have the answer to that. Um, so I'll probably follow up on that one. Okay, um, sounds good. Out of such a cool and relaxed presentation, y'all, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, very good. Okay, that looks like, uh, looks like most of our um, questions are in. If I missed something, Please type it into the chat, everyone. Otherwise, I will start. I will steal the screen share from you, Allison, and uh, just no finish presenting our our last um, few slides here. And just to let everyone know, we do record these. We um, will send you out a link if you register via email, um, and we'll give you all the resources for the docs um, and Allison's demo repo. Uh, and all of that. Uh, there's also a YouTube playlist called The Power of GitOps with Flux V2, where we post all of these videos um, that we've been doing to give you sneak peeks into Flux V2. So, uh, so check that out. And um, if you are still on Flux V1 and you're interested, if you're a production user, you're interested in signing up uh, or migrating to Flux V2, you can sign up for our Flux migration workshops. Uh, there's a bit.ly link here. We'll include this in, the, in our follow-up email as well. Um, but if you are interested, fill out this survey and, uh, and we'll, we'll look into doing this with you. And upcoming events, we have um, Lee Kapili, our, our teammate, uh, is actually pre pre presenting migrating from Flux V1 to V2 um, on the CNCF uh, cloud native live stream on uh, Wednesday. So I think that's 8 a.m. Pacific uh, time. So if you wanna check that out and then it looks like Leonardo Murillo is at Conf42 Cloud Native 2021. Um, and he's gonna actually be presenting doing GitOps for multi-cloud resource management using Crossplane and Flux2. So you can check that out. Uh, and then May 3rd is of course GitOps Con that is co-located at KubeCon EU. Um, as well as our upcoming GitOps Days event, which is June 9th and 10th. The CFP was closed on that. We're reviewing those. We should get a schedule out very soon for GitOpsDays.com. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't registered already, you can go to GitOpsDays.com. 
So next steps is, you know, join the discussions uh, for Flux at GitHub. Um, really, that's like your main point uh, for finding any answers and getting in touch with us, is surfacing any issues and things like that. So please join us there. Uh, the Flux community, fluxcd.io, uh, and then a, a few other resources that we'll include in the uh, in the follow up email. But uh, yeah, if you uh, liked this presentation, uh, let us know. And thank you so much, Allison, for such a great presentation today. Thank you all for joining us. And um, yeah, I think that's. Is there is there anything that you else that I'm missing in the chat, Allison? I wasn't paying attention while I was running through my last little slides. Uh, All good. Yeah, um... I think I think we've covered everything. Yeah, I'll see you over Fantastic. at the GitHub discussions if you need any support. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Allison. Thanks. Bye.